This is Twit. One thing that's helping to take some stress out is Microsoft's, Microsoft's Election Guard, which, as I mentioned at the top of the show, this being a Tuesday, is being used for the first time today. Uh, as the saying goes, if it's Tuesday in the U.S., there's an election somewhere. And in this case, that somewhere is the small town of Fulton, Wisconsin. What's making history there today is that the residents of Fulton, Wisconsin, will be electing representatives for the Wisconsin Supreme Court using voting machines for the first time powered by Microsoft's Election Guard software. Um, these are the first voting machines deployed in any U.S. election that will be running Microsoft's new voting software, which we've been keeping an eye on on the podcast since the summer. Recall that Election Guard is a fully open SDK that Microsoft has made available at no charge on GitHub. GitHub.com slash Microsoft slash Election Guard. The project's goal is to create voting software that uses strong encryption, actually massively cool encryption. It's built by some of the world's top cryptographers, and it allows it to be, thanks to being open source, extensively audited for bugs. I'm I was very surprised when I saw this news because it was just in May of last year, 2019, that Microsoft announced the existence of this for the first time. They then first demonstrated their prototype voting machines to a small audience of the Aspen Security Forum last July. Then they released the first Election Guard code to GitHub in September and opened a bug bounty program the following month, last October. Today's pilot test is deliberately small, expected to have only a few hundred voters casting ballots. But this will provide voting machine vendors, as well as quite anxious U.S. election officials, with a real-world test of the software to see whether it's worth a shot and ready for wider deployment. Um, before today's event, event, Tom Burt, who is Microsoft's VP for Customer Security and Trust, thus in charge of this, said that using Election Guard won't be complicated since Microsoft designed the software from the ground up for ease of use, accessibility, and with a user-friendly interface. He explained that the voting experience is a three-step process. First, a voter will select candidates on a touch screen and verify their choices. Then the voter will print and review for accuracy a paper ballot and simultaneously receive a separate tracking code. Finally, the voter deposits their ballot into a ballot box for counting. And presumably, this is a electronically scannable paper ballot. But as we've described, there's a lot of wonderful, quite advanced crypto technology happening behind the scenes. After casting their ballot, each voter receives that tracking code. They are able to use that tracking code on an election website to verify that their vote has been counted and that the vote has not been altered. In other words, that tracking code lets them see their votes. The tracking code, however, does not reveal the vote, so it won't allow third parties to see who voted for whom. Election Guard employs a homomorph homomorphic encryption scheme, which was developed in-house at Microsoft under the watchful eye of senior cryptographer Josh Benelo. Counterintuitive though it is, this homomorphic I have a hard time pronouncing that homomorphic form of encryption allows the counting of individual votes while never decrypting them. They stay encrypted, yet they can still be counted. What? Yeah. The Election Guard SDK also supports third-party verifier apps, 
which are able to independently check that the encrypted votes, votes have been counted properly and have not been altered. The verifier apps were created for use by voting officials, the media, or any third party interested in the voting process and in, in adding their own verification to it. And election guard machines can also produce, as in, as in, the, as, as in today's case, paper ballots as a printed record of their vote, which voters can then place inside traditional voting boxes, just like old-fashioned ballots. And finally, Election Guard supports voting through open accessibility hardware. Uh, apparently, Microsoft has some Xbox-based controllers that uh, are able to be used. So, are you joking? Or are you serious? No, I'm serious. <laughs> they're they're Xbox based controllers. Yeah, it's not running on uh, Windows, is it? Uh, it can't be. I don't it's know. Open what it's, source? It can't be. Well, it it could be open on source running Windows. on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, given Microsoft, so the voting machines being deployed to being being deployed deployed today in Fulton were built by Voting Works at voting.works and leo if you go there you will like what you see their homepage is exactly what we would want to see it states democracy is a choice voting works is a non-partisan non-profit building a secure affordable and they said delightful voting system it's delightful our voting machine creates paper ballots that voters can directly verify good, yeah. our risk limiting audit software, which of course is based on what Microsoft has done, ensures votes cast on any paper based system will be correctly tabulated. Our source code is available on GitHub. You can help by making a tax deductible donation or joining our team and Voting Works is not alone. Other voting machine vendors, including Smartmatic and Clearballot, have also announced partnerships with Microsoft to build election guard based voting machines. And a fourth group, Dominion Voting Systems, is also exploring the use of Microsoft's SDK. I think this is a perfect storm outcome since once officials see how this works, what it means for the systems to be open and auditable and all of the new features that this system offers, no one who isn't doing this will continue being viable. This makes the welcome and long overdue end to proprietary closed voting machines, I think, just a given and good riddance to, you know, I, I want to say Diebold or Diebold and Diebold is welcome to produce election guard based machines of their own, but they are going to have a hard time. I think in the future selling anything that doesn't use this software, we need this. I mean, this has to be the way it's being done moving forward. So, you know, big, big Bravo to Microsoft for, for doing this, putting it out there, giving it away, making it open. And to all those companies that have jumped on it and said, Hey, we see the writing on the wall. We need to support this or we're not going to be able to sell our stuff in the future. So, yay.